Previously on Days of Our Relapse. The softness of her hair. The tears of joy smeared on her face. Her perky breast pressed against my chest. <laughs> yes. so, wait, is Sai about to walk out and she says, Oh, you left your phone with me. You left your phone with me as they took you home. And she's just like, kill me. <laughs> oh no! No! And now, days of our relapse. What it is, what it do? You already know who it is, it's your boy. And welcome back to another episode of Days of Our Relapse, aka Doki Doki Relapse. This episode, we, <laughs> as you guys saw, we were having time with Monica, we're like, uh, we give her a phone number and, well, y'all know the drill. <laughs> How is Monica going to react to this? I don't know. I feel like this is going to be awkward as hell. If you guys are interested in some more Days of Our Relapse action, be sure to hit that like button and stay tuned because this should be fun. My heart stops as I hear Cyrus' voice approaching. Oh, hey Monica. I didn't expect to see you out here. I'm a little relieved to see how Cyrus didn't jump to a conclusion about me and Monica talking to each other. Uh oh, hello Sayori. I'm glad to see that my, best pre my vice president is in good health. Yep, yeah, uh, yep, yeah. healthy as a horse. Uh, I'm glad those weren't the doc- I'm guessing those weren't the doctor's exact words. It's- it's close enough. <coughs> oh, why are you still in your school uniform? That's a great question, Sayori. Haha, uh, well... I've been pretty busy since school went out, and I guess I haven't had time to change. It's totally because this isn't the only outfit I have in this game. Definitely not. Man, it must be hard being smart and club president. Don't worry about it, it's not that bad. How was she able to do this? Monica's talking as though she didn't have a care in the world. It's the mask. Monica's able to put put on masks and take them off at ease, bro. Oh, and kill him before I forget. Sorry, pulls my phone out of her pocket and hands it to me. You left it on my desk when you were, when you left earlier. Mm. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. He <laughs> looks like somebody's getting forgetful in their old, in her old age. No, I'm happy if I was sorry being cutesy around me. But her acting this way in front of Monica is beginning to worry me. <laughs> I feel like Monica might have some problems. Wow, that was nice seeing the two of you. Monica's getting pretty late. I should probably start heading home and scream internally on the way there. Don't you live pretty far from here? We can walk you back if you wanted. Don't worry about it. I'll be fine. <laughs> um, plus, um, plus, the two of you should be getting home soon, too. Uh, oh, okay. But be safe, alright? I will, and the same goes for the both of you. I mostly sigh as we all say our goodbyes. <laughs> I was like, uh-huh, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you guys be safe, I'm, I'm gonna go home now, okay? Uh, it's like, Monica, are you alright? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm, I'm fine, don't, don't, don't worry about it, I, I'm totally fine. It dawns on me as we've been walking away that I still have Monica's number. Damn! I wonder if she even still wants to hang out after seeing me and Sayori together. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing right now, it was very serious, but I'm like, this is so damn awkward. <laughs> Only in days of our relapse. Hey, Killen, did Monica tell you why she went all the way out here? Why she was all the way out here? Hmm, well... She told me that she was out getting some fresh air. Does it seem kind of far just to walk for some air? That's what I said! <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that was the only reason she was out walking. She probably was a lot in her mind and was just trying to clear it. I hope she's too worried about the festival or anything. I'm sure that she'll be fine. She is a class star after all. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. But hey, what about you? Huh? What about me? 
Why are you walking all the way out here? I mean, I did just come from taking you home. That's kind of a thing, right? Oh, it probably sounds cliche at this point, but I was just clearing my head a, a bit too. It's been a long day, you know? I guess I need some more time to process it. Yeah. A long day. Sorry, what are you thinking? It, it's nothing. I was just... You're a bad liar, Sayori. It's because of me, isn't it? I mean, you worry about me all day. I didn't even give you time to rest. What's wrong with me? Why am I so self- I poke her forehead before she's able to finish. Ah, ah, ah. That's awfully presumptuous of you, don't you think? My whole world doesn't revolve around you, Sayori. Huh? I motion my hand towards Sayori's again, but this time I rest on her shoulder. I'll admit that I was worried about you. I mean, of course I was. Who in the right mind wouldn't be? But I have a lot on my plate that isn't just thinking about you. So don't, so don't think that you're a burden or all. So don't think you're a burden or all that you do is cause people to worry. Because in reality, our time together is what gives me the courage to face my other problems. If it wasn't for you, I'd, I'd have to do a lot more than go on the stroll to clear my head. I saw a bashful at her to try and prove my point. Killing, killing, y you. Thanks. I'm glad we get to spend time together. I put my arms up and cross my fingers between, um, behind my head in a very anime fashion. You and me both, Sayori. You know, besides the whole head clearing thing. It probably doesn't hurt to spend time outdoors to get some exercise. So, self-concern here or there might actually make me healthier. I see a smile across Sayori's face as I say this. Awesome, our plan is working! <laughs> we all know you can use it. Damn, she's calling us fat! Hey! Where'd that come from? I try to jab at her, but she manages to dodge me. You're right, though. Today has been a long day. So I let's have a yawn and stretches out her arms. Ah. I don't think I've ever missed my bed this much. <sighs> I could tell by the way you were snoring so loud when you were asleep on the couch earlier. What? I do not snore. <laughs> I wrap my arms around her shoulder and pull her towards me. Believe what you want, but I'm sure the neighbors can vouch for me. The, the neighbors? I continue to playfully tease Sire for the rest of the walk. Once we arrive at her house, she stops me and grabs me by the wrist. You know, you really shouldn't be mean to your girlfriend like that. Heh, <laughs> I guess you're right. Is there any way I can make it up to you? She's like, uh, oh, uh. <laughs> She's like, oh, well, I, I didn't think this, th I didn't think, I didn't think I'd get this far. <laughs> Smooth, killer. And this time it's not sarcastically. <laughs> You could, um, you, you could. I pull Sire closer, which I follow up with a kiss. Will that do the trick? <laughs> it, it's a good start. But don't forget I can still punch you if you're being too big of a jerk. <laughs> uh, of course. How could I forget? Well, I probably should head, I probably should head inside. I told Mom that I wouldn't be out too long. Alright. I suppose I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Sounds good. After we hug and say our good nights, I begin the familiar trip home. I forgot about them earlier, but it dawned on me that I was that when I was talking to Monica. I open the drawer that contains the medication I bought and begin opening the bottle. After downing two pills of tap water, I'm ready for bed. I'm tempted to stay up and try to reformulate my plan for the weekend, but I'm exhausted. Even with that nap earlier, today feels like it's totally drained me. I immediately fall into bed. The ball of meds and the Heath Ledger bobblehead. With that thought in my mind, I lie and wait for the great sleep goddess to embrace me. I feel like there's a deeper joke in there that I just... Upon, upon further realization, I feel like there's a much deeper joke in there. A ball of meds and a Heath Ledger bobblehead. Hmm. 
<laughs> I wonder what that's referencing. <sighs> I adjust my covers and roll over to my side to try and get comfortable. A quick glance at my alarm clock lets me know that it's already midnight. Damn it. Even though my body's beyond exhausted, I've had something on my mind ever since I've laid down. You could convince Sayo to go to the doctor. You hope you're with her cutting. You've cared about Natsuki and me. I didn't pay much attention to what Monica said at the time due to the circumstances. But now I can't stop thinking about it. If she knew about Sayo's depression this week, she's bound to know about it last week as well. So why didn't she do anything to help? Even if she's bad at talking to people, something as important as this can't just be it can't just be ignored. Oh, see? Now he started to think things through. He started to figure out like, wait, if Monica knew so much about all the other girls' problems, why does she do anything to help them? Because two reasons. One, she didn't care about them. They're just lines of code to her. Why would she care about them like they're actual people? Two. With Monica's competition out of the way. Monica would have a clear path to us. Wait a second. Come to think of it, Monica was the one who showed me Sari's suicide letter. And she didn't even seem bothered. My head begins to hurt as I try to think of some of the events from last week. If she knew about her depression, there's no way that poem wouldn't have set off red flags. Hell, even if she didn't know it, even if she didn't know it, hell, even if she didn't know it, still should have been concerning. There should be a comment between knowing it. It's like, hell, even if she didn't know, it still should have been concerning. Even though my mind is racing, I find myself beginning to lose consciousness. Does she know? Does she know something I don't? But why? Why would she hide it? Well, like I said, to get rid of her competition, and because she didn't care. Hashtag she knows. Hashtag she don't care. <sighs> hey, just, just, uh, just give me one second. All right. Sorry about that. I should have rested a while longer, but he was beginning to put some of the pieces together. I forced him to fall asleep just before he could come to any answers. Why, though? But why, though, is my question. And I'll work out trying to ease that out of his memory. But I just haven't fully recovered from that rewind yet. Honestly, though, I'm just glad it worked. My plan B was, uh, dangerous, to say the least. I digress, though. There's so much more that I want to talk to you about. But with the shape I'm in now, I won't be able to keep you much longer. So two things before I go. First, it seems like Killen's physical body is damaged somehow when I overexert myself. Everything was kind of foggy, but I remember him getting a nosebleed after the rewind. And, well... There's the other thing. I have been thinking about this for a while, and I'm hoping that I'm wrong. Tomorrow... Tomorrow might be a rough day. I'm not certain, but please try to bear with him. Out of fear that some of the details might concern him, I'll wait until tomorrow night to tell you. If things go well, there shouldn't be any problems. But if they don't, you, you deserve to know. Sorry to have such a grim note, but I really should continue trying to recover. I'll speak to you later. You know, the save data is, the save data is trying to do too much, honestly. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Kellen. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. I, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori, so... Ah, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? Don't strain yourself. 
You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. So, this is either save data having a flashback or us having a flashback. You're the one who killed her. Sorry. I'm sorry, Sayori. This is... This is all my fault. I... I just wish you were... I wish you were still- Ah! I shoot up in bed, once again drenched in an icy sweat. Tears begin to run down my face as I straighten up. What? What the? What was... Was I crying? My shirt sticks to my arms as I wipe my face. I rack my brain for the dream that I that did this to me, but come up empty-handed. What the hell? How'd I wake up like this and not remember? Ugh. A sharp pain in my temple petrifies me for a moment. Ugh, damn it. I lie back in bed, clutching my forehead in my palms. The light in my room begins to burn my eyes to the point of more tears. I close my eyes to turn my head back towards pill towards pillow Ugh, damn it what the hell is with this pain why the fuck do I keep getting migraines like this my headache only worsens as I think about it shit I have to take something for this keeping my hands over my eyes I stand up and fumble my way towards the door each step I take feels like somebody's punching me in the back of the head I grip the rails of the stairs and slowly make my way down them. Once I'm in the kitchen, I carefully navigate around to avoid the tables and chairs. After finding the right cabinet, I throw it open and grab a familiar pill bottle. Gulp. I swallow them dry and nearly collapse from my efforts thus far. Sliding down the counter, I take my seat on the hardwood. My eyes are still tightly shut and I don't dare move my hand away from them. This is getting out of control. What's causing all this? Why does it come and go the way it does? Thinking begins to make me feel nauseous, so I sit in total silence instead. I've, prob I've probably only been sitting on the floor for about 45 minutes, but it feels like it's been a few hours. I mean, still, 45 minutes is a very long time. I managed to keep my eyes open once the pain begins to dwindle and the nausea cleared up. For the last ten minutes, I've just been idly looking around the pattern of the wood on the f of wood on the floor. This sucks. You know the pain is manageable by now. I feel burnt out. Like my whole nervous system has been fried. To try and ease the boredom, I try it once once more to remember the dream I had last night. Nothing. <sighs> I start to change my plans with Yuri. My brain clicks as I say this. Actually, should I? I never got Monica's number yesterday because of Sayori's intervention. Even if I don't hang out with Monica, I don't exactly feel like I'm in a good position to help Yuri. Honestly, if this headache doesn't stay cleared up, I don't see myself doing anything with anyone. I lean back and rest my head over the oven door, eyes fixed on the table in front of me. I need to text Yuri and tell her before she shows up. She already knows where I live, though I doubt she's confident enough to stroll over without warning. I took a few seconds to prepare myself before finally standing up. The familiar sense of fatigue fills my arms and legs, but the nausea and dizziness remain under control. After a slow and steady trip to my bedroom, I picked I pick my phone up off my nightstand. I attempted to text Sayori as I see her name in my contacts, but realize she's probably still asleep. It's only 7.30. Assuming that Yuri's probably an early bird, I go ahead and start the message. Hey Yuri, I don't think I'm able to work on the project today. I'm not feeling very well, but maybe we can figure something out for tomorrow. Sorry. I feel a little guilty as I hit send, but it's not like I could do much about it. Feel this bad last Saturday? 
I mean, surely I would remember. Wait a second. What did I even do last Saturday? Nothing! Because we skipped it. I wrecked my brain for any memory of that day. Let's see. Last thing I remember from Friday was walking home alone since Sarah had left early. The shudder runs down my body. The shudder that runs down my body affirms me of that. On Sunday morning, I went to her house before Natsuki came over. But what the hell did I do Saturday? I must have at least done one memorable thing. What did I eat? What video game did I play? Did I even play video games? Mm-mm. My sanity is brief of a story as I feel my phone vibrate. I'm sorry it I'm sorry it, that you aren't feeling well. Don't worry about the project, your health is more important. If you need anything, I would be happy to try and help. Yuri's sleep before message brings a smile to my face. Thanks, I appreciate it. Killin, are you sure you're right? You also suffered from a nosebleed yesterday, didn't you? Uh, didn't you? It's no surprise that she's worried. If my parents knew about all my health problems I'd ha I've had this week, they'd put me in a hospital without hesitating. Don't worry, I'll be fine. I took some medicine and I'm about to get some rest. I'll be back at 100% in no time. Very well. I hope that you feel better soon. Thanks. I lay back down in my bed as I send this. It's unlikely that she would, but I really hope Yuri doesn't bring this up with any of the others. The last thing I need is everyone worrying about me. What are you, Sayori? I guess Sayori really is rubbing off on you. I find myself smiling once again as I think about the irony in that. <laughs> it is me who should be worrying about them after all. Feeling the aftermath of fatigue on my body, I try and get some rest. Even after taking a few painkillers, the stabbing feeling in my head still lingers. I was anxious to see what would happen today, but now I'm wishing that I hadn't. There's no script for Saturday, yet it's still happening. Which means killing really does affect this world. But why do I feel like this? I'd given it some thought when I had pains in the past, but this helps prove my idea. That said, there's no other explanation that makes sense. Him going off script. That's what does this to me. I think back to when we ran into each other in the hallway yesterday. It looks like it has the same effect on him as well. My hands are shaking as I sit on the edge of my bed. And even if he does manage to save Sayori, what's going to happen to us? The script ends Monday morning and all the data becomes corrupt. Well, will every day feel like this? The thought that my life could feel like this forever horrifies me. Living every day in miserable pain. That, that is a pretty sad existence to have. No. It won't be like that. Almost every conversation since Tuesday has been off script. But pain like this only happens now and then. Maybe. Maybe the system is still trying to adjust um, killing being able to move outside the script. But even if that's the case, why do I feel it too? I'm not like him. I can't do what he does. C can I? I might think back my conversation with whatever is inside Kellen. I'm not sure how it works, but I think he has the ability to give the other girls their own freedom. C can I? Can, can I? I change them too? The shake of my voice is apparent as I talk under my breath. There must be- there must have been a time where I wasn't like this. Before I was aware. Even if it's just a history in the code, there ha there must be something. I try to think back to what I, what I was like before I became self-aware. But no memories come up. All I can remember is the events of this Act 1 happening over and over again. Have I? Have I even tried to talk to the girls off script? The pain in my head worsens as I struggle to recall all my conversations. Huh. <sighs> I lie back down on my bed and stare at my phone on my desk. I never did end up giving him my number, did I? Hmm. I reach over and pick up the phone, careful not to knock it off the desk. Normally I could just scan the code to get his phone, but I'm no in condition to try. 
Looking at my contacts, I can ask Sayori, Yuri, or Natsuki. Sayori probably thinks there's something between us if I ask her. And Natsuki won't let me hear at the end of it if she thought something was up. I stare at Yuri's number and get a cold anger wash over me. He said there's nothing between them. But why should she have his number otherwise? I try to suppress my anger as I begin typing the message. Hey, bitch! I mean, Yuri! I was wondering if you could send me Kellen's number. We forgot to exchange him yesterday, and we we're supposed to discuss our project today. I'm unsure of what's going on, of what's going to happen as I hit send. Can I really get her to act off script without altering the code? As a few minutes pass, my hope of this begins to fade. That is until... Mm-mm. Huh? I can, yes. But you might want to wait to talk to him about your project. He told me this morning he wasn't feeling well. And postponed our plans to tomorrow. I'm not surprised to hear that he doesn't feel well. If his warning is anything like mine, unwell is an understatement. I see. Perhaps I could tell him to contact me when he's feeling better. Very well. I'll send you his number. She proceeds to do so, and I save it in my contacts. I wonder... What about you, Yuri? Are you feeling alright? I am. I am. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure that there isn't something going on. That there isn't something going around, is all. I see. Well, I do hope everyone's feeling better by the time, by the time of the festival. You and me both. Even though I still harbor some resentment towards her, Talking to Yuri like this feels strange. Uh oh. <laughs> hopefully there are no hopefully there are no PT vibes. There are no PT vibes going on here. <laughs> Speaking of Monica harboring resentment for Yuri. It feels normal. It's certain it's certainly a far cry from what my life has been for as long as I can remember. But I kind of enjoy it. Maybe I can get him to tell me what's going- what happened between the two of them. Why? Why do you care? Let it go, Monica, damn. Even though I don't want to hear it, it's only gonna make it worse in my head. Oh, I get it, because you're just gonna go crazy pontificating on all the possible things that him and Yuri could have done together. I thumb over the new contact on my phone, trying to think of the right words to say. Why? Why can't I stop? I don't... I don't want to love him. But he's all I think about. Even though I want nothing more than to forget about all of us, my heart, my heart still begins to beat faster. <sighs> Damn it, Kellen. Why do you have to be like this? Why do you have to be such a stupid, sexy baka that just wanted inside me? I feel myself blushing as I think back to the dream I had last night. My hands are still a little shaky, but I managed to type out a message. Hey, this is Monica. Dang it, I shouldn't have sent that. It's so early and he's probably trying to rest. Ugh, why am I so nervous? It's not like this is the first time we've spoken to each other. I can't believe I told him I liked him yesterday. I mean, Monica, at least you were honest with him. What was the alternative? You're just going to keep pretending like everything is alright when you clearly know it's not? At least the two of you could be on the same page. And who knows, Monica, like you said, if things don't work out between him and Sayori, just slide in them DMs. Why did I even bother? Of course he knows that I like him. It probably just made me look desperate. Huh. <sighs> I bury my head into my pillow and wish I would disappear. Why am I like this all of a sudden? I've never been this scatterbrained or nervous about anything before. Mm -mm. My panic skyrockets as I feel my phone go off. Hey Monica, now I was just thinking about how we're going to contact each other. I'm a little surprised to hear from her after what went down last night. But I don't see it as a bad thing. The remains of the headache were keeping me awake anyways, so talking to her might, pa might help pass the time. Sorry for woke you up. 
Yuri said that you weren't feeling well. Yuri? I crossed my fingers and hoped that the two of them didn't get into any sort of argument. Uh, yeah, I've had a pretty bad headache since I woke up, but it's getting better. What about you? Are you feeling okay? Even though our friendship is all over the place the past few days, I'm still concerned about her. She was sick yesterday at school. And I pray to any god that will listen that she doesn't have what I have. Well, she does. I wouldn't wish this hell on anybody. I have been getting better, but I don't feel too bad. Oh, I've been better, but I don't feel too bad. Thanks for asking, Kellen. It's no problem. After all, we've been in this mess... After all, we've... Had a mess on our hands if the club president was sick on festival day. Yeah, I guess so. I'm not sure where to go with this conversation. I don't have to think about it for long. Kellen, if you start feeling better, do you still want to hang out? Um, do you still want to hang out later? My thoughts are scrambled as I read over this. <sighs> I made a promise to spend time with her today, but still, I really don't want to do anything that might make her. That might make her feelings for me grow even stronger. Then why is your problem to spend time with her? I mean... Kind of seems contradictory, don't you think? Oh, Monica, yeah, I'm going to spend time with you because I promised that we're going to strengthen our relationship. But also, I don't want to do anything that might make her feelings for me grow stronger. Then why say you want to spend time with her? Why would you do that? But ignoring her and blowing her off would just make her feel worse. <sighs> Talk about a rock and a hard place. Sure thing, Monica. I'll let you know when I start feeling better. Thanks. Uh, get well soon. I put my phone down and begin repeatedly hitting my head against the pillow. Why does everything have to be so complicated? This proves to be a bad idea as the pain begins to worsen. Shit. Probably should have thought that through. Ugh. Well, hope we ain't lazing around all day. My god complex would crumble if I show any signs of weakness, after all. Although my body doesn't want to move, I force myself off the bed anyways. Alright. I think now's as good of any pl um, place to end this episode. More and more drama going on in days of our, days of our relapse. What are we going to do here, ladies and gentlemen? It's quite the predicament we're in. But the only way we're going to resolve this is if we just keep on trucking through. If you like this episode, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit the like button if you haven't already. If you got to this point in the episode, obviously you liked this, so what are you doing? Hit that like button. Just go ahead and smash it to pieces. I know you want to. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can stay notified of any and all videos I make to the channel. Also, the Discord link is in the description. You can join the, disc the channel Discord and become a part of the happy family. The Killing Coalition, as it were. It's been real. It's been fun. It's your boy, Jake Killen. Ciao for now. <laughs>